Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming to the welcome session this morning. My name is Liz, and you are at the welcome session for the Faculty of Arts, Business, Law and Economics. We sometimes call it ABLE as well, so you hear that thrown around quite a, a lot today. Thank you for coming, and we're really looking forward to having you studying at the University of Adelaide. So first of all, I'd just like to start by acknowledging and paying our respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on today. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationships of the Ghana people to country, and we respect and pay their, um, we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to the land and the cultural beliefs. I'd also just like to acknowledge any First Nations people in the room and anyone in the faculty as well. So thank you so much. So what I'd like you to do now is whip out your phones for me. And if you could scan this QR code, I'd like you to check in to this session today. So great to see all these phones puffing up. Now, what you can do by getting to check in today, you're in the running to win a prize, which we all love. Who doesn't love a prize? I'd also like you to keep your phones out after you scan the QR code and check in. What I'd like you to do after you scan your code and check in is to have a little look at the room in which we're in. So this is called Benithan Hall, for those of you who don't know. And Benithan Hall is where you're starting your journey today at the university. Benithan Hall is also where we hold our graduation ceremonies. And it's where you'll finish your journey at the University of Adelaide which is really, really exciting. So when you work really hard and finish your degree, you've spent years and years in your studies, cramming for assignments, all these sort of things, eventually you'll get to walk across this stage, stand in the middle here, and get a photo taken of you on your last day in a lovely gown and a beautiful outfit. So what I'd like you to do to mark this occasion today as your first day of university is to keep your phones out and take a selfie of yourself. So I'd like you to all do that for me, to mark this occasion. I'm going to do it with you, OK? So we can all do this. And then on your last day at a graduation ceremony, you can also take a selfie and compare the two. So is everyone getting their phones out, taking their selfies? All right, thank you so much, everyone, for indulging me in a little selfie moment. And again, I hope you can really value and appreciate how great it is that you're here today and hopefully reflect when you're going to a graduation ceremony in a few years' time and you'll be on this stage again and you'll remember that lady in a red dress who asked you to take a selfie on your first day of uni. So I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Liz Class, and I work in the Student Success Team. Today, we also have Professor Jodie Conduit, who will be speaking with you today, and also our lovely student, Rihanna Cruz, and she'll be telling you a little bit about her experience as a student at the University of Adelaide in the Bachelor of Languages. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Professor Jodie Conduit now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, I would also like to start by acknowledging that we are meeting today on the lands of the Ghana people and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And in the language of the Ghana people, I would like to say, Mani na pudni, which is welcome. And on this very special day, I'd like you to welcome not just to the lands of the Ghana people, but specifically to the University of Adelaide, as you start what I hope is a very exciting journey ahead. As Liz mentioned, my name is Jodie Conjute. I'm the Acting Executive Dean for the Faculty of Arts, Business, Law and Economics. 
And in fact, when we look at student numbers, we're actually the largest faculty here at the University of Adelaide. So we have seven schools in our faculty, and I know that many of you will come from probably all of those schools here. We have the business school, which covers um, discipline areas like marketing, management, entrepreneurship, accounting, finance. We have the law school. We have economics. We have the School of Education. We have the School of Social Sciences with topics like anthropology, um, criminology, politics, international studies. We also have the School of Humanities where you can study things like philosophy, creative writing, um, languages, linguistics. So, and then finally we have the Elder Conservatorium where we have some of Australia's best musicians, um, you know, conductors and so forth that come from that um, school. I mention all of that and take time because while you're here at the University of Adelaide, I really hope that you take the opportunity to study not just in the degree that you're enrolled in, but also to follow some passions. See what else might take your interest. Really broaden and study something that maybe you haven't studied before or don't know anything about. I actually sat exactly where you're sitting almost 30 years ago. I did my first degree here at the University of Adelaide as Bachelor of Commerce, and I came in wanting to study accounting. I did study accounting. I graduated with an accounting major. But I stand here in front of you today as a professor of marketing, having had a career both inside and outside the university in areas like market research and consulting and working for some of Australia's you know, leading companies like ANZ, Optus, and I spent five years as market research manager of National Australia Bank. So my career went in a direction that I could never have imagined when I sat here 30 years ago. And I hope that your careers will also go in directions that you can't imagine. Now I know that you've probably been told that all your life. The, the future jobs you know, for Australia and for graduates coming out are ones that we don't even know about today. But at the university, I hope you really take the opportunity to not just learn the content in your lectures, but learn how to be creative, learn how to be innovative, learn how to think outside that box, you know, learn how to question what we do in society. Because only if we do that are we going to have a world that you create that is much better than the world that we live in today. Not that there's anything wrong with today, but I know that we can you know, do things even better. So here at the University of Adelaide, I find it really interesting. We have a really proud history, but we also have a really exciting future. And you're part of both that history now, as well as the people that are going to create that really exciting future. The University of Adelaide is actually the third oldest university um, within Australia. And next year, it turns 150. So congratulations, you're all here for the party next year. So we'll be having lots of events. This year, in fact, our law school turns 140. So they're starting the party early. They're the second oldest law school within Australia. Our elder conservatorium also turns 140 this year and they are the oldest tertiary music provider, again, within Australia. So most of you have probably seen our ads on TV over the last few years about making history and you can see the banners as you walk around campus. And you've probably heard things such as, you know, we were the first university to admit females into university in Australia. What you may not know is we were actually the second university worldwide in the English speaking world to admit females to university. So we really are innovative and leading the way. Not only do we have the first female prime minister, we also graduated the first female surgeon. We graduated the first female to have a doctorate in music. We have five Nobel Prize winners. Again, they tell you that on the ad. They forget to tell you that that's one third of all Nobel Prize winners in Australia. And we have Nobel Prize winners, yes, in things like you know, um, developing penicillin and in sciences, but we have Nobel Prize winners from right here in this faculty, including in literature and creative writing. What that means is it's not just the history of this university, but it's a legacy and it's the fabric of who we are still as an institution today. We really have still a strong creative writing program, the way our Nobel laureates come and visit and do pre presentations. 
We have a research centre that is dedicated still to gender studies. We have research projects. You know, we, we talk about Andy Thomas, who was the graduate of the university, who was the first Australian to go into space. Still, we've got research topics where we're now investigating how do we grow food? How do we grow plants in space? What do we do? You know, all areas of this faculty are changing and developing and conducting that type of research. Our business school last year shaped and changed some of the way that self-managed superannuation funds are conducted in Australia. Our law school made changes to things like bushfire law and contract law, and made changes to laws that actually help protect vulnerable adults in our society. And our areas of um, the Elder Conservatorium, they're working with the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra, and next week, well, in a couple of weeks' time, you can go and see them at the Adelaide Festival doing a production of um, Floods of Fire. So we're always at the, the leading edge. If I come back to where I started today, where I welcomed you in the Ghana language, I could only do that because of the researchers that we have here at the University of Adelaide that actually helped to re-establish an almost extinct language in the Ghana language. Our researchers brought back a language that hadn't been used for nearly 100 years and now is actually the first language, nearly 50 people in our society, and that number is growing. So when I say to imagine your future, Imagine where it can take you, you know, be involved, talk to the people that are around you at university, learn about this diversity and these different things. I'm really excited to look out and see so many people here today, especially with it being 41 degrees. So thank you all. I know it's not 40 yet, but it's definitely in mid-30s, so thank you all for coming. I think as a university, we've really had been challenged over the last few years and reflected, and I know that many of you had the same experience you know, through your secondary education of COVID. I'm gonna say the C word, COVID. Um, but we were challenged whether or not it's best to have a university experience that is here on campus, or one that is delivered through Zoom and through technology. And there were some people that suggested that, you know, Zoom lectures were the way of the future and that is how we should deliver our education because it was more convenient. Well, I think that we're finding that convenience isn't everything, that there really is something about being on campus, being part of this experience where your university studies aren't just about learning content. You can all go to Google, you can all sit at home in your bedroom and watch on a computer screen. But what I really encourage you to do is come and do what you're doing today. Meet new people, find friends that you're going to have for a lifetime. Go down to the maths lawns and have a look at the range of opportunities and experiences that this university offers that are going to really help you and, you know, not only are enjoyable, but help you develop skills and friendships for your future. I encourage you that when you've done that, it is hot. Go along to the cloisters, go along to the uni bar, have a drink, even if it's non-alcoholic, and look at where people before you have been sitting since the early 1930s when that area was developed. If that's not your style, go into the reading room in the library, which is just majestic for having a, a bit of space and a bit of sort of reflection on your own and in peace. This university's got so many different pockets for you to explore. I think we are really privileged. We have one of the most beautiful universities in one of the most, right in the centre of one of the most awesome and dynamic cities. And I really encourage you over the next three, four years of your degree, you know, to explore that to its fullest, make new friends, learn new things, challenge yourself, and I really hope that you fall in love with it as much as I did 30 years ago, but still also today. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jodie. It was really great to hear about your own personal experience, but also about all the amazing things that the University of Adelaide are doing in terms of research and you know, contributing to our community. Um, funny story about me as well. I was a student at the University of Adelaide many years ago, and I was in the same position as you. I studied a Bachelor of Arts, and when I had my graduation ceremony, I was offered the job at the university on the very same day. So that's a little bit about me. So in terms of what we can do to support you, 
You may have heard me say before that I work in the student success team. You might be wondering, what is student success? What we do is we want to help you with anything in terms of graduations, enrolments. If you're planning on doing an exchange in your studies, we can help you in how you might be able to fit that into your degree. So we're always there to help you and we really want to make sure that you succeed in your studies. We have a range of people in our team with all different specialisations and we're all very friendly and we don't bite. So I definitely recommend that you come and have a chat to us. There's a lot of different ways that you can contact us as well. So we have drop-in appointments. Um, we also have appointments that you can book in advance if your you know, question you have is a little bit more complicated. We also um, can be contacted via email. And it's really good to email us because you have a record of it in writing as well. So if you ever need to refer back to anything, you've got that in writing. You can also give us a call. Um, we are located in the Nexus 10 building, which is just across the road, um, and we're on level one. So you'll see some floating desks there, and there's usually some lovely people like myself and my colleagues who are smiling at you, and there's an iPad there for you to check into. So we definitely encourage you to, to chat with us anytime you have questions about the structure of your degree or your enrolment. I'll also mention as well, and some of you may have heard, that we have an enrolment support hub in the Hub Central building. So if any of you, hopefully some of you, most of you have been already enrolled into your subjects, but if you still had some questions about, you know, how do I enrol, um, if you're having any, you know, issues with adding classes, for example, I definitely recommend heading over there in between your sessions, potentially, to have a little chat with them. There's a whole team there, and they also have a lot of computers ready to go. So if you did need to enrol on the spot, they can help you with that there as well. So I just want to talk a little bit more about some of the student support services in terms of like academic support as well. So whilst we help with more getting through your degree and enrolment and making sure you can graduate, there's also a lot of support services who can help you academically. So we have, first of all, the Maths Learning Centre. So some of you might be thinking, well, I'm not studying a maths degree. There's nothing maths related in my degree. But you might be surprised to hear about, you know, how much math there is actually included in degrees. So if you do any subject on statistics, for instance, the Maths Learning Centre is a really great place to start. So they have drop-in services and their website is fantastic as well. They actually have a whole lot of resources that you can download on the website which go into detail about the mathematics involved in certain subjects. And they love maths there. They're like maths gurus. So if you ever want to chat to them about any troubles you're having in any subject, I definitely recommend as a first port of call looking on their website. Um, but also you can go and chat to them. Um, they have you know, a range of different um, support services there. So I definitely recommend you chat with them. The next service I'd like to talk about is the Writing Centre. So the Writing Centre are there to help you with how to structure papers or how to write a report or what is a literature review. There's a lot of different types of writing styles that you probably haven't come across before. You know, in high school, it's, you know, there's probably a, a small range of um, assignment types that you have, but you'll find it's quite diverse when you come to university. The Writing Centre is really, really great and you can book in appointments and they also have priority if it's your first time booking with them. They're really, really fantastic. And one of the things I learned recently, which I thought was really fantastic, is that they can also help with structuring oral presentations. So you might think, well, that's not really a written piece of paper, but it's something that you need to structure. It's an academic piece of work. And that it's, you know, I just think it's a really great service. So I definitely recommend you touch base with them as well. I'd also like to talk about Studiosity. So Studiosity is an online service. It's available on the weekends and from the afternoon until midnight during the week. They're really, really great. They can help give you sometimes instant feedback on assignments. Um, so I just think they're a really great tool to take advantage of as well. The last service I'd like to talk about is PASS. So it's sometimes called peer-assisted study sessions, but you'll most often hear it spoken about as PASS. So PASS is student-led learning. So often what you'll have is a group of people in a subject who are all taking that subject at the same time. So say you're doing, you know, foundations of law or something like that, and you're taking that subject 
there will be a student who's taken that subject before who's done really, really well, and they'll guide you through their helpful tips and tricks about how they studied for assignments or how they studied for the exam or what techniques they had. A lot of the subjects you'll do at university can be quite different to what you've done in high school. So I think they're a really, really great um, service to take advantage of. All of the services I've spoken about today as well, they are for any student at any stage in their you know, studies. So if you are struggling a little bit with an assignment or struggling a little bit with a topic, you can definitely take advantage of them. But also, a lot of people use these services if they you know, say, for example, want to just boost their grades a little bit. So say you're sitting on a distinction and you want to get a high distinction. They're also really great for helping you out. So always feel like you're welcome to book in with these services as well. I will just say as well that all of the services are available. There's a lot of different websites about them and you can also access lots of information and registration information as well online as well. So now I'd like to welcome to the stage our lovely student, Rihanna. She's going to talk to you a little bit about her studies, her experiences, and she's got three helpful tips to talk to you about in terms of her advice for you as a student at the University of Adelaide. Oh, I'm a bit short. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. And a big thank you to the Faculty of Arts, Business, Law and Economics for having me share my experiences with all of you guys this morning. My name is Rihanna and I'm a third and final year uh, student in the Bachelor of Languages with a double major in Japanese and Linguistics. I've been invited here today to give you insight into my experience as a current student at the University of Adelaide, as well as express words of advice for you guys, commencing students. And let me tell you that when I say I love studying here at this university, it is not an understatement. From being able to make new friends from a variety of backgrounds and interests to having the opportunity to study about topics I am extremely passionate about, the university student lifestyle has exposed me to more than just my progress academically, but more so my progress as an individual and my identity. Now I thought the best way for me to share my experiences so far while providing some helpful tips would be through giving you my top three pieces of advice. Number one, extracurriculars are amazing ways to make new friends. For myself, I'm the treasurer of the Adelaide Fashion Collective and an avid Valorant and League of Legends player for Adelaide University Esports. But if you asked me at the beginning of my academic journey here in the university that I would be doing these things, I would have laughed hysterically, as I never thought I would be so involved in the extracurriculars associated with the university community. With this in mind, there are a range of social clubs, sports clubs, and groups you can join. These cover a number of hobbies that you may have felt passionate about for years or fresh new interests you've been wanting to get into for a while but never got the chance to do so. If you have felt like you might find it hard to make friends, don't hesitate to get out there and explore the large variety of clubs, sports and social groups offered at the university. I guarantee you will always find something you like and a place of belonging while making new connections with other students. Number two, university services are always here for you. You are not alone. Now, my time here at the University of Adelaide has not always been sunshines and rainbows. There have been times where I felt overwhelmed, stressed, and absolutely manic. But not to worry, I luckily had access to services at the university that helped me along the way. And honestly, I don't think I would have gotten this far without utilizing what the university has to offer to its fullest capability. Academic services such as the Writing Center and peer-assisted study sessions like Liz has talked about, as well as emotional and mental well-being services like counseling, have been extremely beneficial in maintaining both my results as a student, um, but more importantly, my mental health as a human being. Moreover, I totally understand how in high school teachers constantly hark on about how you need to learn to be independent as university teachers won't be there to help you. However, I assure you that is not the case. While independence as studying adults is important and is something you learn throughout your university journey, your peers, course coordinators and tutors are always there for you when you need help the most. Don't feel scared to approach your lecturers or tutors after class for more assistance with your studies. It's what they're here for. And third, finally, do not, I repeat, do not leave things to the last minute. While procrastination is a habit for most, that most students, including myself, have fallen into time and time again, you should avoid falling into the trap of leaving assignments, enrollment, and all things university to the last minute. Leaving things to the last minute in many regards can have multiple repercussions. By not enrolling ahead of semester commencement time, you may find courses you want to enroll into are full, and you have to wait for them to open a place for you. 
This can be extremely time consuming, especially as you get closer to the end of your degree. The less problems, the better, so keep organized with your enrollment and courses. In addition to this, you should mirror this engagement with your studies as well. Stay on top of your assignments by following a schedule, dedicating time specifically for your work, and avoid cramming for exams through attaining information constantly over the duration of the semester. Leaving your studies to the last minute heavily reflects on your academics results. Trust me, there's a difference and it shows. Now, overall, there are three main points I wanted to emphasize today. Don't procrastinate, TikTok is not worth it, I promise you. University services are always available for you. All you have to do is ask. And finally, make some friends. Thank you so much again to the Faculty of Arts, Business, Law and Economics for having me come and speak with you all today. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me. And I'll hand it back over to Liz. Thank you so much, Rihanna. That was really great to hear. And, you know, I think those tips will be really handy for all of you in the room. I think we can agree. Um, I know that I'm a bit of procrastinator, so I need to take that on board too for myself. So I just wanted to also highlight that we have the ABLE Society Showcase. So we spoke a little bit about before clubs and societies. This is a really, really great way to make friends and a really great way to connect with students in your degree. There's also, not only are there degree-related societies, but there's also other more, you know, personal interest-related societies. So there's dance clubs and film clubs, but there's also those really, like, law, you know, student societies, business student societies. So I would definitely recommend that you come along to the showcase. It's next Wednesday. Um, so maybe take a picture of this screen and um, keep that in mind as well for next week. So now we're coming to the end. It's very sad. I know you want to listen to me speak all day, but alas, we have to wrap up. So now what we're going to do is, again, thank you. You've already preempted what I'm going to say. Get your phone out and scan the QR code. The QR code will take you to a website which will show you where your program information session will be. So they're starting at 11.30 today. What I'll get you to do in a moment is I'll call out degree names and when I call out your degree name, I'll get you to stand up and exit towards the back. There may be a little bit of awkward shuffling between people to get past, but we'll get there. Um, so as I said, I'll call out your degree names. What I'll get you to do before I start doing that is I'd just like to again reflect on what I said earlier about your achievements in getting to university and how amazing it is that you're here. So I'd like you to all give yourself a pat on the back and a round of applause for being here. So well done to you. Thank you so much. So hopefully everyone's managed to scan that QR code and knows where they're going. What I'm going to do now is call out the degree names and let you know where you'll be. So what we're going to do is start with the Bachelor of International Development. So for those in the Bachelor of International Development, if you could stand up, head to the back of the hall. Someone will take you to where you need to go. It's going to be a Napier lower ground 19, but someone will guide you there. So if we've got any... International development students, stand up and head to the back. 